Perfect. Perfect. Hello everyone, this is chapter 1, lesson 1.1. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about exponents. Here are some of the definitions that we will be talking about. A power, base, exponent, and a perfect square. By now, you should have your notes already written down, and this should be review. Okay, so what is a power? A power is a product of repeated factors. Again, so product means multiplication and repeated factors is that number a bunch of times. For example, uh, you know, seven times seven times seven and so forth. Okay. Now, what exactly is the base? The base of a power is the repeated factor. Okay. A lot of this is going to make sense once I start pointing it out to you. The exponent of a power indicates the number of times, this is important, the number of times the base is used as a factor. So in your notes, you should have this written down. The base is 3. The exponent is 4. The power is both of these together. And then just it written out is 3 to the 4th power is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, so we have the base, we have the exponent, this right here is the power, okay, and then if we had to, you know, break it apart, it would be, we have, how many threes do we have? We have four of them, so three times three times three times three, okay, let's check it out, there's a few, there's a few tricks, but you're going to see them every once in a while, but not all the time. So 3 to the second power can also be uh, written out as 3 squared, squared. So anything to the second power would be squared, right? 3 to the second or 3 squared. Anything to the third power can be called cubed. So 3 to the third power or 3 cubed. This would be 3 to the fourth. Those are the only two that have special names. 3 to the fourth and 3 to the fifth, okay? Now let's do some example questions. It says, write each product as a power. Remember, we want to have both of them together. So we want to have the base and then we want to have the exponent. Well, this is my base. 7 is my base. Now we want to find the exponent, the repeated factor. So how many of these do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 of these. So it would be 7 to the 5th power. Okay, let's try another one. So again, we have our base, which is our number, so it's 12. Okay, now we want to find our repeated factor. How many times does this repeat, right? So re repeat. How many times does it repeat? 1, 2, 3. So this is 12 to the third power. Another way to say 12 to the third power is 12. Does anybody remember the word? We just used it. Is cubed. To the third power means cubed. All right, Ooh, look, this one looks like it's a hard one, but it isn't that hard. All we need to do is practice it. So 100 is our base. So we have 100. And let's see how many times it is repeated. Okay, so we want to see how many times it is repeated. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it was a factor of 6 times, which is 100 to the 6th power. Okay, let's try these ones right here. And then we'll finish with example one. So two is our base. How many twos do we have? Oops, let me zoom back in. How many twos do we have? We have three. So two to the third power or two cubed. All right, let's try another one. Six is our base. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six to the sixth power. Here's another one, 15. 15 is our base. How many 15s do we have? We have one, two, three, four. Now we have 20 is our base. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 20 to the seventh power. All right, that's example one. This is example two. In example two, we are going to find the value. That means how much something is worth the value finding out the answer so that means we have to solve this problem now let's remember this is our base and then this was our 
exponent. This tells me how many times that number was repeated. You're going to be very tempted to just say 7 times 2, and I want to tell you that's wrong, okay? That is not 7 times 2, okay? That's actually going to be 7 times 7, because that 2 is telling me how many 7s do I have. So how many 7s do I have? I have 2 of them. Now we just need to simplify that and solve. What is 7 times 7? So 7 to the second power equals 7 times 7 is 49. Okay, let's try another one. All right, again, this is not 5 times 3. That is not the answer. What we are supposed to do is find out that is our base, and then how many times was it repeated, our repeated factor, 3 times. So 5 times 5 times 5. All we need to do now is simplify it. Well, this is one way I like to do it because it's just it, it's easier for me. It's, I kind of kind of like the stairs. So let's see. What is 5 times 5? Well, that's 25. Let's rewrite our problem. And now what is 25 times 5? That's going to give us 125. So what is 5 to the third power? 5 to the third power equals 125. Let's see if we can solve a few more problems. All right, here's this one. So this is not 6 times 3. I'm going to try to say it again. It is no, not 6 times 3. It's actually, here's our base, right? So 6 times 6 times 6. All right, so let's start off. What is 6 times 6? Well, that is 36. And then what is 36 times 6? All I'm doing is I'm bringing that down. Well, let's see. Let's break this up. 30 times 6 equals 180. And then... 6 times 6 equals 36. If we add those two together, we have 6 plus 0 is 6. 8 plus 3 is 11. Carry the 1. That's 2. So 6 to the third power is 216. All right, let's try another one. All right, again, this is not 9 times 2. No. I'm going to write it no. Not six times two, 9 times 2. This is actually 9 times 9. This is my base. This is my repeated factors. Tell my exponents. Tell me how many nines I have. I have two nines. So my answer is 81. All right, let's try another one. Again, just I'm going to keep on repeating it until you never forget. This is not 3 times 4. That is wrong. This is actually 3 times 3. How many 3s do I have? I have 4 of them. So 1, 2, 3 times 3 times 3. Now let's solve. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And then 27 times 3 is 81. Okay, that was example number 2. In example number 3, we are going to be talking about identifying perfect squares. What exactly is a perfect square? square. Well, a perfect square is any number, I'm going to try to say this right here, so any number that can be multiplied by the same number. So for example, a times a, or b times b, or c times c. Now I'm going to give you an example in number wise. So 1 times 1 would give me a perfect square. 2 times 2 would give me a perfect square, right? It's the exact same number. So 3 times 3 that would be a perfect square, okay? Oh, sorry, not 2 times 2 is 4. Wow, my bad. All right, 4 times 4 is 16. That's a perfect square. 5 times 5 is 25. That's a perfect square. Okay, so all of those numbers are perfect squares. That means two numbers that are exactly the same will get you a number. So now let's think about this. What two numbers that if we multiply the exact same number, if we multiply them by themselves, would get us 64? Now, there may be an answer or there may not be an answer. So let's take a look. Let's see. Well, 64, let me just go up. I, don't, I really don't know. So just let's figure it out. 10 times 10 is 100. So that's way too big. Let's try to go smaller. Well, 5 times 5 is 25. Well, that's too small too. Let's go bigger. 7 times 7 is 49. That's too small as well. So let's try the next one. 8 times 8 equals, well, would you look at that? 
So is 64 a perfect square? Yes, it is, because we know that 8 times 8 will give us 64. And another way to write 8 times 8 is 8 squared. All right. Let's try another one. Let's see. Number tw uh, 20. Is 20 a perfect square? Well, let's see. What two numbers will get us pretty close if we multiply them to 20? So let's just start. 3 times 3 is 9. That's too small. Let's try this one. 4 times 4 is 16. That's still too small. Let's try the next one. 5 times 5. Well, that equals 25. So 20, 5 times 5 is too big. 4 times 4 is too small. So then is 20 a perfect square? No, it is not. 20 is not a perfect square. All right, so let's take a look. Let's do some more examples. 25. What two numbers, if we multiply them, will get us pretty close to 25? Well, let's just start. I think four. Let's try with fours. Four times four equals 16. Well, that's too small. Let's try the next one. Five times five. Well, that equals 25. So... We found it. Is 25 a perfect square? Yes, it is, because we know that 5 squared will give us 25. That is a perfect square. Okay? That is example 3. Perfect.